and welcome to the Board Game Network. This is James. I'm going to be explaining how to play this game called The Manhattan Project Chain Reaction, put out by Minion Games. The war minister of your small nation has been tasked with confronting aggression by developing atomic bombs for your country. Your spies have stolen the technology. You need to acquire materials and personnel before rival nations do. And the first to develop 10 kilotons of bombs will be the last round. So I've got the deck set up here. We just got stacks of yellow cake out here. We've got ones, threes, and fives. We have landmark cards, just four of them. And all they are is they're trading. They show you the trades that can happen. You don't actually get the cards. They just stay out for the whole game. But if you play Settlers of Catan, it's like a four for one trade or something. Uh, you can trade three personnel for an engineer, trade three per any three personnel for a scientist, trade any three personnel for a yellow cake, trade two scientists, or one scientist and two yellow cakes for a uranium, or two scientists and one yellow cake for a uranium. So that's it. it. You've got some bomb loaded cards, they're all the same. And you um, shuffle your bomb card deck deal one card per player out so I've got this set up for three players um, so I'd have three cards up you have your deck shuffled you pass five cards to each player and you give the start player this card to keep track of who started the game because the game ends at the person to the right of the start player so everybody has the same number of turns this game plays one to five players and in about 20 to 30 minutes so what you do is you just take your cards, I haven't even looked at my cards, and you can play all of your cards in two different ways. You can play them on the side and they give you some personnel. So here's two laborers here. And then they all your cards also cost something. At the top of the card, they show you what the cost is. I've got something that costs two scientists and five yellow cakes. Another one's two scientists and five yellow cakes. Here's three of anything because they got question marks just like these question marks. And that provides three yellow cakes. So you notice that the landmark trades are not nearly as good a trade as I have a card that gives me three of any personnel for three yellow cakes. This trade is three personnel for one yellow cake. So these are not very good but they help if you need them. Well, I don't have, I've got two engineers, I've got laborers, I've got a scientist. So let's say that I, you know, and then I have this special card that says look in an opponent's hand and take a card or steal one yellow cake from an opponent. And so you can just play that uh, on your turn anytime. So what you do is you play cards on their side for what they do. So I can play an engineer and two laborers to get three personnel of any kind and I can get three yellow cake. So these are just like money, you can trade them, um, get change, whatever. So three of anything, I've got two laborers and engineer. Now if I would have play, had extra, so in other words if I had four personnel up here. I do not get change back and I cannot use that fourth one for another card. I can I can combine cards to pay for a single card, but I cannot split a card into multiple cards. However, this output down here, this can be used for multiple cards. So if you're getting an output of personnel, those can be used for other more than one card. This symbol here means you can draw two cards or dis or make an opponent discard two cards. So that would cost two of any kind of personnel to do that. See this one here has an output of three engineers. Now those three engineers, those can be split among cards. So that's a slight difference between that and if you're playing cards on their side. And I don't really have anything else I want to do here with these cards. So these cards will get discarded. 
at the end of my turn. And I can discard as many cards as I want, so I can discard some other cards if I want to, or discard all of them and then draw back to five cards. And then the next player goes. And you keep going until you can build 10 points worth of bombs and bomb loaded. And what a bomb loaded card does is once you can develop a bomb, you have the option of putting bomb loaded cards down there as long as you can pay for the cost. And that just adds to the value of the bomb. You do not need to use these if you don't want to. So let me get to where I can actually develop a whole bomb for you. So let's say it's by next turn. Let's see if I can find something else I can do. Well, let's see. I have, ooh, I have a scientist here, and I need a scientist and one uranium, so I can turn that in for three yellow cakes. I need a scientist and one yellow cake, that's what it says. So I can take a scientist and one yellow cake to develop a uranium, and their uranium's on the back of the yellow cake. And the back of a three yellow cake gives you two uranium, the back of a five yellow cake gives you three because that's usually the trade value on these cards. Um, I don't really have anything else. Well, I could, let me think. I could trade three. Let me show you how to use a landmark card. I've got two scientists and two laborers. I could take three of those and get an engineer, take the engineer and get two yellow cake. So I've developed two more yellow cake. All these cards go away. Next player's turn. I draw five cards. So it comes back around to my turn. Let's see if I can build a bomb on this turn. Hmm. And here's your bomb cards out here. So you have to pay the cost here for the bomb cards. So this bomb card costs two scientists, one engineer, and three uranium. This one costs four uranium. This one costs four. I need a lot more uranium. So I'm going to have to produce some uranium here. So uh, I've got one that produces uranium. And it costs a scientist and three yellow cake. I have three yellow cake. So let's see if I can come up with a scientist. Here's, a, here's two scientists, so I can pay extra. Two scientists, three yellow cakes that I turn in, and I get two uranium. So that one goes back, and I need two scientists and a engineer and three uranium. So let's see, I've got two scientists here, and I have two engineers. And I have three uranium, so I can turn the three uranium in, and I get this bomb card. So I've just developed a bomb, a four kiloton bomb, and I'm four points towards the ten that I need to end the game. And then I just discard all this. The cards you keep at the end of your turn are you keep any yellow cake you have, you keep any bomb cards, you keep any bomb loaded cards that you have, and you can choose whether to keep cards in your hand or not. And you keep any uranium cards, any yellow cake, any uranium. And that's how that game works. You go until somebody has 10 or more points and then the round ends to the player to the right of the start player on that final round. Once again, there are, it can play solo, and to play solo you put four cards, four bomb cards out, and your goal is to build the most bombs and get the most points by the end of going through your deck one time. Um, there are some there are some cards in here, these special cards that allow you to do something. Uh, wherever that card went that I had. The... The factory, the double agent, and the espionage are 
the, the way they work is different for solo. So just look in the rules sheet for how those work differently. But pretty simple game. That's how you play the Manhattan Project Chain Reaction. Make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network. We appreciate all of you viewers and especially you subscribers.